this bottle tells the tale of one man who not only loves to recycle, but also helps and ensures we can pronounce the distilleries correctly, like a whiskey Sesame Street. So pull up a stool as we talk about the host of the VPUB and his special single cask release. My face still may be a bit off, but behind the glasses, I'm still Jeff. This is whiskey. Let's crack on. Jeff Whisker. So if you're putting yourself through the torture of my videos, I imagine most of you know of Roy and his channel Aquavite. He's such a passionate person for all things whiskey and is a real heart of the online whiskey world. You can also see in a past video, he's quite a slapper. So on some of his weekly VPUB videos, he gave a lot of praise to a bottle of Loch Lomond. Loch Lomond? Clearly not learned anything from Roy. He gave a lot of praise to a bottle of Loch Lomond, which was produced using Chardonnay yeast. Then as the word got out, people caught on with the gold, it quickly sold out. And then later Roy told his bar flies, that's what he calls the people who watch his VPUB, not just he talks to animals like a Dr. Doolittle. But he said he's releasing his own single cask pick, which is again a Chardonnay yeast from Loch Lomond. Here's the bottle. It's a 10 year old single cask, first fill bourbon barrel. So let's dive into the experience. As you can see, it's got the new Loch Lomond look with the massive bold type logo at the front. At first I wasn't a huge fan of it, but comparing this to the old ones, it is an improvement, even if it's a bit full on. However, we get down to the facts on this bottle which as you can see, it all states proudly, natural color, cash, strength, non-chill filtered, as well as cask and bottle numbers. So all the nerdy facts that us whiskey nerds enjoy. For me, the highlight is the stunning artwork on the back done by Whiskey Central. Great channel, make sure to check her out. Of course, I can't finish rambling on about the experience without giving the old slap test. Which side? I tried to bang on his logo. Let's try the other hand. That's better. It slaps nicely. It scores very nicely. It hits all the key points on experience. It's got all the facts, all the nice little elements and touches, and it's gotta be a full six out of six Jeffs on the experience. So, now to the booze itself. Here goes on the nose. The first hit is very bourbon barrel sweetness. Uh, lots of marshmallow. Maybe a little bit spirity. I went full Bruce Almighty then. <laughs> now I'm just a bumpkin who knows nothing about Chardonnay yeast. All I know is I quite like wine and I like Marmite. Not getting either of those things. It's very sweet, fizzy, sherbet lemons, um, lots of raspberries and drumstick sweets. Like the pink and white sunburnt looking things. It's really pleasant. It's like a summer eating mess. Like you've got raspberries, strawberries, pavlova, cream, and then you've just chucked a handful of squashies for good measure. It's very engaging, very sweet, and I think it's going to be hitting high with five out of six Jeffs on the nose. Right, no time to waste. Let's get to the taste. Cheers. The first sip is very Prosecco-like quite fizzy, um, lots of fruit, and you've just, you've got a glass of Prosecco and you just bombarded it with fruit. You've got raspberries, grapes, nectarines, just all bobbing around, surrounding by bubbly fizziness. There's a real- What was it Shakespeare said? He said a lot of things, Jeremy. Dry white wine taste, which just engulfs the cheeks and demands another sip. That's not the exact quote. Isn't it? Tell you what, each sip it changes. So what I'm gonna do, I've only so far had, I think, three glasses over the last three nights of this. And before you start shouting mega pint, I have also shared some of the bottle with others. So no need to be worried about me, but do drink responsibly. I'm just gonna sit away for 20 minutes just to see how I get on. I'll see you in a bit. A few moments later. Right, really hope I've set everything back up correctly. Now, after just, sitting away and just pondering it a bit further, each sip it does change. It really does. And I keep getting this, I know it's unpeated, but it's like a burnt wood, almost smoke note lingering at the back. And the fruit that's in there just keeps changing. So it goes from kind of like the sour side, almost like grapefruit, um, unripe peaches, 
and then it goes really sweet. So it goes to the sherbet lemons, fizzy bonbons, and it just, it just flicks back and forward. There is a little heat from the ABV, so I'm now gonna just try it with a drop of water and see what happens with that. As you can see, I'm prepared for once. Right, so I've just done a drop. Let's see what happens. The nose is definitely more lemony, more citrus. That's really cut through the dryness and it's just an explosion of fruit, maybe artificial fruit. Tango Ice Blasts, you know, the ones you get in the cinema that cost a mortgage, like both flavors mixed in. And you do have still the sweet and sour chicken ball taste. It just keeps adapting, keeps changing, and it just keeps bringing you back for more. Ideally, I would tend to try to sit down with a bottle for at least a few weeks before I attempt to review however I wanted to strike while the iron's hot. A part of me hoped that it wouldn't hit the hype so that I could look all impartial, integral. It's good. You picked a corker, Roy. Yeah, that's enough rabbiting on because I feel like this is going to be a crazy long video and I'm going to have to give it a score on the taste and I'm going to give it... I would say there's that slightly spiritiness and slightly sharp dryness, which for me is not my favourite flavour in a whiskey. However, overall, the complexity of how it just adapts and changes, it's going to have to be a very impressive five out of six chefs. So let's talk money. What's the value of this whiskey? So this is my most expensive whiskey purchase, 69.99. However, due to the story behind this bottle, I was happy to save and splurge on this. Roy himself has been super kind and supportive of my daft little channel, and it's great to be a part of the community he's created. So when I found out this bottle, I wanted to get involved, I wanted to enjoy it, and it adds to the level of value, so that's got to be a factor. It's a great presentation, both visually and factually, and sits in line or even slightly below other single cask releases in terms of cost. The value is going to be 4 out of 6. Right, the total score is coming in big at 20 out of 24 Jeffs. I would love to know your opinions if you got your hands on the two, one of the 250 bottles and I'd love to know your experience with the bottle. If you like the review you can support this slapper by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. If you've hated it you can dislike it. Now I'm going to go sit with this glass for the rest of the day. Cheers! and all the best. Mm. Had to catch the dribble.